the term post-American world is an interesting one. I'll, I'll use it as a synonym with the word decline, which often comes into the debate, or the rise and fall of great powers, whichever way you want to do it. And the first big point I want to make is this. If you look back as far as I can look back, and I've been around a long time looking back and looking forward, uh, the term post-American world or the notion that the world is becoming less American, less dominated by America, less shaped by American policies in some way or another, that debate has been around for 50 years. It is There's nothing new under the sun in this debate. And I went back and just went through a series of books and articles written from the 60s onwards. The 1960s was a period when we were told after Vietnam and all the problems associated with that, the United States could no longer do in the world what it used to be able to do. The 1970s, according to Ronald Reagan, uh, was an era of drift and decline. There's a New York Times headline in 1979, it's time to stop American retreat. Ronald Reagan said, after a decade of retreat, we're gonna rebuild American power. And in 1987, my good friend and colleague now at Yale, Paul Kennedy wrote a best-selling book called, guess what? The Rise and Fall um, of great powers. Now, it is certainly true that for the next 20 years in the so-called era of unipolarity, that debate went away. But a little bit like the undead, it rose again. Having the stake thrust through its heart several times over, the debate about a post-American world, a, a declining American power, the inability of America to shape uh, choices either for itself uh, arose again. It followed the 2008 crisis, there were other factors that came into it, the Iraq war, no doubt, the rise of China. You know the story, you know the factors that went into making this scenario. And by the way, in 2008, Farid Sakaria, I'm sure most of you know, you know, wrote a book called The Post-American World. Now, Farid did not say this was the same as decline, but I kind of took that as a little bit of a playing with words, really. It added up, in a sense, to my mind, at least. So we've been around with this debate, not just since Farid Sakaria, but actually not since... Paul Kennedy in, in 87, but a long time back. And even looking back through a series of new books, I'm sorry to be so academic on this, but it's worth, let me take 2018, the former director of Chatham House, no less, my good friend, Victor Bulmer Thomas, The American Empire in Retreat, The Past, Present and Future of the United States. That was Victor. 219, book by George Packer, Our Man, Richard Holbrook, and The End of the American Century. And then Andrew Basovich, a wonderful writer too, I think on, on, on the United States over many years, in 2020, The Age of Illusions, How America Squandered Its Cold War Victory. So I, I suppose what I'm really trying to point to, this is, there's nothing new about this debate, which actually does alert us to a problem, which, only, which I think Mark Twain summarized rather well many, many, many years ago in an entirely different context. Reports of my death, uh, have been greatly exaggerated. And I just wonder if we don't need to remember the words of Mark Twain, if you don't mind me quoting that great American writer, to thinking about this particular discussion at the moment. Now, this is not to say for one second that America has faced a whole host of problems uh, which have been manifesting themselves both at home, and I know Jonathan's going to talk about that, and, and abroad. But I suppose and the title of my book, of course, is called Agonies of Empire. So I inevitably deal with many of those problems, both domestic and, uh, and foreign, as, as they would say. But I suppose I still get back to a kind of structural kind of way of thinking about America. It still retains, and I, I can't see there's very much dispute about this, it still retains vast amounts of what we call power, whether measured economically, militarily, in terms of alliances, in terms of corporations, in terms of innovation, in terms of winning Nobel Prizes in the STEM subjects, etc 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 so the question i want to pose and i only pose the question without answer so therefore what's the problem because if america still retains such vast amounts of structural power why therefore have we been talking about this this problem for many many years and and indeed in a more intense way over the last few years 